Concentration. Hi everyone, I am Joseph, Senior Supervisor from the Modeling Department at Micros Animation. I have been an artist since childhood, so I went on to go complete my BFA degree from College of Fine Arts. So This is my starting of my professional journey. As an artist, I learned many several forms of arts and paintings including human anatomy and landscape as well. That is my beginning of this animation industry. Looking back, I have already been in this industry 24 years. In that 10, 10 of those years in technical, now I am leading a team of 40 modelers. So it's an incredible journey. Hello everyone, I am Pradi, the head of department for uh, rigging at Micros Animation, which is within the technical creative studios. I am from an engineering background with a B in computer science. Like uh, many other people, right from my childhood, I was uh, good at drawing and painting, which uh, motivated me to take up a CG course after my graduation. Uh, having said that I have a technical engineering background, I thought uh, rigging would be the appropriate department to choose within this animation industry. I have been with Technical Art for about 18 years now. I started my journey as a rigging artist, then slowly, step by step, grew up into a rigging lead, then to a rigging supervisor. I then got an opportunity to move into the pipeline team to serve as a CG supervisor for a few years and recently returned back to the rigging team as the head of department now. I now manage a team of about uh, 40 plus riggers working both in the feature films and episodic side. That's, that's in a nutshell about me. On the expectations of a rigger, a rigger is a technically sound person and of course with a good amount of uh, artistic skill set as well. Uh, I would say he needs to be a logical thinker and a very good troubleshooter. Mathematics is something that can come in handy for a uh, rigger because we deal a lot of uh, math notes while working on the rigging part. Python scripting is definitely an added advantage for a rigger because a uh, lot of automations can be done with that to help uh, speeding up the rigging process. But I wouldn't say it's a must-have for all the riggers because there are very good riggers who do not have much of a scripting knowledge as well. For a rigger, uh, the client, the first client is an animator. So meeting their expectation is the first and foremost thing. For an animator, uh, his expectation is always about getting a high-performing, fully functional and an optimized rig. So meeting that expectation is a uh, first priority for any rigger. Apart from delivering the rigs to the animators, uh, the rigger's job doesn't end over there. He is also responsible to ensure that the file flows smoothly in the pipeline. To ensure the files flow smoothly in the pipeline, sanity checking is very much critical. So an attention to detail is also a much needed expectation from a rigger. It's important to pay attention to nature and be a good observer. We need to capture what we see in the nature for our modeling. That is called a drawing skills. Drawing skills are not that much important for the 3D modeler. But if you become a good modeler, you need to practice for the drawing skills. 
when we receive the inputs from the client it just a outliner for the information so we need to tap our creativity and the nature to make the assets holistic drawing helps in capturing ideas and in consider the most important secondary skill for any modeler 3d modeling is used in various industries like film animation gaming interior design and architecture it is also used in the medical and mechanical industry a variety of 3d software is used to make models of parts before they are manufactured learning keeps you mind engaged and body active it helps you to develop a new world around you learning creates a pathway to handle a wide range of challenges and keeps you updated with the upcoming industry even coding knowledge helps c and c++ now languages are used for graphical programming and graphical rendering characters play a critical part in the production and they are the main focus for uh, any good rigger uh, characters can be of uh, different type it can be a cartoony style it can be a mechanical one or else a hyper realistic one but the approach for each of the character type might be a little different but the fundamentals remain the same for all these asset types i would split the rig basic rigging approach into two categories one is the puppet generation process and the second one is the deformation generation process for the puppet generation we usually use a modular rigging system that usually we have it from an in house setup or sometimes it comes from the client who are outsourcing the project to us we use a modular rigging system so that the rigs are consistent across the shows once the rigging puppet is created we start working on the deformation side deformation usually starts with a skin cluster then based on the complexity or the requirement of the show we stack it up with linear and other non linear deformers blend shapes also play a critical role to get the right kind of deformation and preserve volumes in areas wherever it is needed in inputs for rigging usually include animatics storyboards and design packs we also rely on uh, pose sheets and expression charts for some of the assets which includes a specific functionality we also uh, take a look at a live reference as well sanity checks also plays a major role in rigging we do have uh, internal tools which can run through a series of checks like catching the geometry naming errors hierarchy errors and also can run a series of clean up functions calisthenic test is another thing which we perform to make sure the rig performs well for the animators before we do a publish to the production finally you can see the chart on the screen for an overview on how the rigging workflow in production is it starts with the joint placement then building the puppet which is which is usually through a automated tool like advanced skeleton and gear or a proprietary tool then we build the deformation stack run sanity checks and calisthenic tests and finally do a publish to the production coming to modeling there are a lot of process of types of modeling here i will dive into some of them but there are always more to learn character modeling character modeling is the process of transforming a concept essentially an idea into a three dimensional model the character artist builds the model from the ground level using tools such as polygon modeling art surface modeling and digital sculpting techniques environment modeling is about creating a environment and acting space for the characters to play a city jungle and caves are all types of environment modeling props modeling are the objects that are used within the scene such as furniture or weapons these are the objects owned or handled directly by the characters the cartoony style is exaggerated and does not follow that proper anatomy and proportions of human especially the characters have huge eyes and mouth which is not seen in the realistic world for example look at disney characters semi realistic semi realism an art form that seeks to combine realistic and stylized characters it uses proper anatomic and stylized design for example the crudes and mona hyper realistic 
if you are looking at the model and cannot tell if it's a real one or generated model for example the avatar characters if you are looking in the detail of the modeling process this is what it's looked like once we receive a drawing from a client we check the animatics and the storyboard we look for the actions of characters and set before we work on the model according to the client inputs we discuss the rigging teams requirements in terms how they need the mesh flow and joint placement and visibility switches and things like that these are the points we establish before modeling i will share more about the modeling process and specific software later after complete the modeling we cross check the models and rigging and texturing team before sending into the client techniques in 3d modeling digital sculpting creating high detail iris models by the method cannot be used directly in the production a low res topology models need to be created and apply the details as a normal map scanned model a new method of 3d modeling was introduced with the advancement of laser scanning technology in this technique a real object is laser scanned to create a digital representation of it the scanning process is usually quick and easy but the geometry created needs to be cleaned up before the production nerves modeling it is mostly used in the automobile designing for smooth curves and easy building techniques polygon modeling is most popular now in the animation industry when it comes to softwares and tools we primarily use autodesk maya in production we also use other third party tools and plugins like uh, advanced skeleton m gear and g skin tools and lot of the tools for creating the corrective blend shapes creating procedural or uh, dynamic setup in the rigs we do have a lot of uh, internal rigging tools developed by our production technology team to help with the deformation part as well we do have tools to convert one deformer type to another for example extracting a rock to a skin cluster converting a wire deformer to a cluster and vice versa riggers also write their own python or ml scripts on the fly to speed up or their rigging process when they are working on the projects the other thing is optimization optimization as i said before it is a critical part better frame rates per second is the expectation from the animators we use the profiler extensively to make sure the nodes which we have created in the rigs all evaluate in a parallel fashion with a lot of advancement in technologies we now use a lot of matrices and math nodes while creating the rigs which helps in getting a better fps in modeling we use maya zbrush blender unreal engine and marvelous designer modeling requires careful observation manipulation and correction of 3d objects through different attributes of different software mastering this skill needs practice in various subject areas we create the base mesh in the maya and use zbrush for more detailing and sculpting blender is used to create the model and sculpting for some projects unreal engine is good to view real time renders of the final result quickly heavy set dressing is easier to handle in unreal engine marvelous designers is mostly used for realistic costumes to create more natural wrinkles and fabric detailing we need to develop skills in the all those software and use what is required based on the project mostly working with the rigging team we try to help each other to create corrective shapes that are the best for the animation requirements as per the art direction and they create clusters for us and start blend shapes we create models according to that visibility switches for rigging requirement when an artist create a character 3d modeling and rigging are two essential process to go side by side in the production as joseph explained uh, the collaboration between the rigging and modeling teams uh, starts right from the very beginning stage of an asset build the mesh flow and uh, how the loops are uh, made in the model is very much uh, important in uh, 
deciding how the deformation would look like when it gets flicked. Especially in uh, assets which have multiple layer of clothing, how the loops are structured is uh, very much critical in deciding whether the deformation will look appropriate and whether there will be any intersections or not. Uh, also in uh, mechanical assets or uh, assets which have some kind of transformations involved, we collaborate very closely with the modeling team to make sure that the intended linking functionality is uh, achieved. Dynamics in rigging is something we use for the secondary movement for body parts like uh, tail and ears. And we also use a dynamic setup for uh, clothing and accessories as well. We primarily rely on an NHAR based dynamic setup for these kind of rig builds. We do have an in-house dynamic rig setup which is through an NHAR system. Um, we at times take support from the FX team for uh, manipulating the dynamic properties values like uh, gravity, turbulence and other environmental factors. Collision is something that we rarely use it in a dynamic rig. If there is a very complicated uh, simulation requirement, then usually it is being handled by a CFX team instead of adding it into the rig. In AE technology, 3D modeling has a major part. They are only helping out in providing inputs to generated AI. So there are a lot of opportunities open for 3D modelers. At Micros, we usually work on cartoony style characters, but at times we get to work on uh, creature assets like dragon, dinosaurs, and other alien characters. A lot of customization of the puppet is needed on creatures. For example, in a dragon, to get the wings in a believable manner, a lot of customization and manual work is needed on top of the automated rig puppet. Deformation also plays a major role in the creature characters. We do not use a muscle system, but we try to get a precise deformation with the help of skin whiting and other small little rigging techniques. We also use a lot of correctives to make the deformation look much believable. Only ZBrush skill does not help us to grow in this industry. And we need to learn other softwares like Maya, Substance Painter to help us to take our work for the production level. That's a great question. Weight painting is a skill that develops with uh, practice and experience. I would say you should start with uh, blocking the weights, then moving on to the smooth skinning. Start with two joints at a time and keeping the rest of the joints on hold or lock so that there is no stray weight issues. NG Skin Tool is a great tool for uh, working on a layer based uh, skinning technique. Once you get used with the tool, you can actually speed up the process of creating the right skin weights. The secret for success in uh, skin weighting is knowing the fundamentals of the basic in a strong manner and keep practicing. For entry level artist, one should explore new technology and new skills. Basic drawing and coding knowledge also helps. As you can tell, rigging is challenging. It's a technical role in a, a creative field. We help bring 3D objects to life. Learning opportunities are plenty. If you are very passionate and uh, keep upskilling yourself and uh, adapt to the new techniques, anyone can for sure become a successful rigger. Yeah, I agree with Pradeep. To become a successful modeler as well, you should be a good learner and be willing to adapt a new techniques in the industry. Animation is one of the fastest growing careers these days and the huge demand for more and more skilled modeler has created a lot of job opportunities. Just remember, practice makes perfect. Thank you for joining us today. Please subscribe to the channel to receive updates and join our next masterclass.